Hello everyone and welcome to the first impressions with the Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus and S21 Ultra. Keep in mind this is going to be a short video with all the things you need to know about the new Samsung smartphones. So what's the difference between these three phones? The S21 is going to have a 6.2 inch display, the S21 Plus a 6.7 inch display and the S21 Ultra a 6.7 inch display but more curved than the others. It's going to keep the similar curvature of the Note Ultra series, but the S21 and S20 are kind of a different breed, let's say, because there's some differences in specifications, resolutions, and also battery. The S21 is going to have a 4000 milliamp battery, the S21 Plus a 4800 milliamps battery, and the S21 Ultra a 5000 milliamps battery. Yes, all of them support the same fast charging speeds, but I doubt the fast charger, the ultra fast charger, will come in the box. Well, how does it feel like and how does it look like? It looks like a premium device, which it is, but there are some differences. On the S21 Ultra, on the back, we have Gorilla Glass 7 and on the, on the display as well. The S21 and S21 Plus, they have a combination of glass and plastic. So actually it's much lighter and Samsung says it's three times more resistant than the other versions. I personally prefer this combination. I don't insist having the same premium materials on my phone because the S21 Ultra is going to be heavy. That's 228 grams. That's almost the same as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which it's not so bad, but still it's quite heavy. There are several colors available. We're going to see Phantom Violet, Silver, White, Blue, Gray, and Black, my personal favorite, and possibly some other models on the Samsung.com website, which is actually a good place to buy it from now on because they have a full working shop right there. The screen is quite different. The uh, Samsung Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus will only have a Full HD Plus resolution and the S21 Ultra is going to have a WQHD Plus resolution. But still, all of the models will support 120Hz refresh rate and that's a good thing. But there are some differences as well because the S21 and S21 Plus will only go down up to 48Hz. That means when you're looking at the phone and there's nothing moving over there, no widgets, no video, the screen is going to show up at 48 hertz to save some battery. The S21 Ultra, in the meantime, because it has a more brighter display, is going to go down to 11 hertz. And that says a lot. The displays are quite different, but at first glance you won't see any difference. I'm not going to talk about the CPUs right now, but as always, Qualcomm is going to be available in the US market and the Exynos version in Asia and some parts of Europe. But for the first time, Samsung says the Exynos version is going to be at the same level as the Qualcomm version, especially in benchmarks, where everybody saw that there was a slight difference in performance between the two CPUs. So let's talk about memory and storage. The S21 and S21 Plus will come with at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It goes up to 256 gigabytes, but the S21 Ultra version will go up to 512 gigabytes and possibly one terabyte in the future. And the amount of RAM memory available will be 12 or 16 gigabytes. That's as much as an Ultrabook these days. On the camera sides, there are a lot of differences, not between S21 and S21 Plus, which are quite the same. They both have a 12 megapixel camera for the ultra wide, a 12 megapixel camera for the wide, and a 64 megapixel camera for the zoom lens. So basically the same camera, same 
specifications and also on the front a 10 megapixel shooter. The S21 Ultra is going to have a different layout. It's going to have two zoom cameras, uh, that's a 10 megapixel 3x zoom and a 10 megapixel 10x zoom. It's going to have on 108 megapixel sensors for the main camera and also a 12 megapixel for the ultra wide. And I almost forgot, 40 megapixels for the front shooter. Yes, it's going to shoot 8K in 30 frames per second with both cameras and yes, 4K 60fps with all of the cameras. And here comes the fun part. There's a special mode called Director Mode, which allows you to use almost all of the cameras of the phone, even the ultra-wide and front camera, and film with two cameras simultaneously. And that's an interesting thing, because while you're filming, you can actually switch between cameras, you can resize them, you can switch the layout, and it's gonna be fun, especially for those who want to uh, be a one-man show. They want to film themselves saying something about the in environment and also at the same time filming what's in front of them. And this would be a lot interesting if the phone would let you save all of the streams from all of the cameras so you can stitch them up later in a software like Adobe Premiere Pro. The stabilization of the camera is quite good and actually there is no difference between the ultra-wide, the wide and the zoom cameras on terms of color. They are quite the same. If you switch from one to another, even in video mode, it's going to preserve the same aperture, the same white balance and the same colors. Yes, Samsung has fixed that problem with the S20 Ultra when you go uh, well beyond 20x zoom and you cannot actually stabilize to take a nice shot. Right now, when you want to shoot something with more than 20x zoom, there's going to be a little pop-up screen that shows up in the top left corner, which is going to help you stabilize the image and actually focus. One more interesting thing, the S20 Ultra is going to be the first of the series which works with the Samsung Galaxy Note pen, or actually it's going to have a separate pen that comes with a case, and it's going to be for those who don't actually know if they're going to choose as S20 or S21 device or a Galaxy Note. They want to feel how it's like to work with a small pen on a smartphone. And yes, it supports almost the same functions as the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which pen I used to test it. Let's talk about prices, which are not very small. The cheapest one is the Samsung Galaxy S21 with 128 gigs of storage and 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is going to cost you about $850. The bigger version, the S21 Plus, is going to start at $1,049 and the biggest one, the S21 Ultra, is going to start at $1,249. Yes, that is a big price, but keep in mind, these are the latest Samsung smartphones and the best of them all, right? Actually, you might want to keep an eye on the pre-order status because you might grab them with a pair of Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro, which are the newest Samsung true wireless headphones. And yes, they sound really good. I've played with them for a few minutes and yes, there is a bigger driver in there, a 12 millimeter driver for the lows and a six millimeter drivers for the medium and the high frequencies. And yes, it does sound good even with noise cancelling on. So this is pretty much anything you need to know about the new Samsung Galaxy smartphones, the S21, S21 Plus and S21 Ultra. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like it even more, give it a share and maybe subscribe to our channel to see more interesting content, especially the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra hands-on review after a few days, which is going to come up in a few days. That's it for today. My name is Radu and see you in the next one. Cheers.